One of the most common things I hear as an investor who speaks to over a thousand different people from around Australia and the world each year is I wish I started earlier or how can I educate my kids and get them into the market earlier. Now, as a dad of three, I'm super excited to bring some of the tips and tricks that I've learned from buying over 300 million bucks worth of property for myself and my clients so that you can make their life a little bit easier and hopefully facilitate or help them get into the market a bit sooner get financial freedom, and as a parent, give them what we really want for them, which is the best life, choices in their future that maybe you and I didn't have so that they can become the best version of themselves as soon as possible. So first things first, Benny, just take everybody through your you know, family situation and dynamic at the moment so people can maybe relate yeah, sure. So my family is myself and my wife, and we've got three kids, a 10-year-old, an 8-year-old, and a 4-year-old. Um, I started investing personally at 24 down in Sydney. My cat's just about to jump up. Forgot I've got a cat, a dog, and two guinea pigs. <laughs> just lost our five fish as well. Oh, no. Um, but I started investing before I had kids at 24, bought a couple of investment properties before I had my first bub, and then my wife and I bought our third property, a really cute little house for just over 300 grand um, when we had our first. Now, obviously we're brothers. Uh, Dad's never been an investor, always just a hard worker and a businessman. So we didn't necessarily get this type of information at an early age. You figured it out a lot earlier than other people. But you know, what are some of the lessons that you've learned from our experience with dad and some of the things that you're hoping to change with your children moving forward? Yeah, so I just remember um, when we were really, really young, we used to go down to Mollymook because we grew up in Sydney. So Mollymook's about, what, two and a half hours south of Sydney? Used to be three and a half, now it's about two. Yeah, about two hours south of Sydney. And I remember we used to always stay on one of dad's clients' properties on the beach and across the road there was this vacant block of land all with like a tiny little shed on it. And I remember every time we'd go down there, mum and dad would be like, I wish we had a home down here ourselves. And at the time, properties were selling for like 80 to 200K. Mm. Um, and then I remember so distinctly driving back, I was still in primary school, and the whole way home they talked about buying this place for 80K, which was across the road from the beach. It recently just sold for more than 1.5 mil. Mm. And they kind of just went, you know, all the way home. And then I was like, cool, we're going to have a holiday house. And then crickets, like mm. nothing happened. And I heard them every single time we went down there for every holiday to this point, I wish we had of. And I'm like, for some reason with my mindset as a kid, I'm like, I'm not going to be like the wish I could have done this yeah. in my lifetime type guy. Like I learned the lesson in like year five. And as soon as I could afford to, when I finished uni, I started to really think about this stuff. That would have been literally the most that our parents ever talked about property investing as well. So how have you changed that and what are you currently doing for your young kids now? Sure. So the first thing that I'm doing, which many of many of you guys are doing listening to this, is actually just leading by example. Like by you being an investor, I heard this great thing from my psychologist years ago that children don't hear what you say, they watch what you do and then their actions become the way that you act or react to situations. Mm. And so I invest. I'm an investor first and I'm a business person, a very, very, very distant second. Mm -hmm. And so my kids have seen my wife and I invest. And that was the second thing that I do. Like I physically show them what we're doing. So it's not like the old days of parenting where it's like kids are seen and not heard type vibe mm. or they have no idea what mummy and daddy do or we keep our work lives separate from them. We actually show them and, you know, an example of this is we're renovating a property on the sunny coast that we bought about five months ago now at the moment and we've taken the kids around there four or five times. We've shown them what it was. We told them why we bought it. We told them what it's going to do in the future and we're showing them the pool go in, the kitchen go in, the flooring go in and mummy managing that. Like, mm. you know, my wife and I are lucky enough for her to not have to work full time at the moment or even part time um, because of the investing that we've done previously. Mm. And so her job, and it's hard for the kids to get this because they see her as like the cleaner, the cook, like the emotional support for all of us in the house and mm. the person that just manages our whole life. But I'm like, no, mummy's job is to help with renovations, to help us buy properties, to look after them as we 
manage them moving forward. And so they're starting to see that like there's a reason for investing and that is to like get time back with the people, people you care about and make different decisions as well. It's so taboo to talk about the financial situation within a household here in Australia. Like it is not something common, but I can see a common trend through all of my friends whose parents were very open about their financial situation, what they do for work, what their bills are, what their expenses are. Like one of our best friends, you know, their parents would, you know, take out the cash at the end of the week and go, okay, well, we just want to show you where this money goes. And like they get their income, they put it down and go, well, this is the mortgage. These are the bills. This is for the food. This is for that and the other. And then at the end, there's like, $75 left or something like that. And they're like, this is all we have left over. So every time you kids ask for a toy, a lolly, a this or that, it's coming out of this little bit of money. Whereas if we don't spend that, we'll be able to put that towards savings. It will grow over time and then we'll be able to invest it. And, you know, these two girls are some of the most financially savvy 25 year olds that I know in my whole entire life because of those experiences. So, do you find it's just breaking down that model and just like being open? A hundred percent, man. Like it's like I, I was recently at the doctor because I <laughs> he landed on my ear in the surf and fucking <laughs> broke my eardrum <laughs> and almost like knocked me out in the water. Being a dickhead as well. <laughs> like it wasn't an accident. I was being a dick. I um, <laughs> I just like I remember like getting out of like standing up. I'm under the water actually when you hit me in the head and I'm like, that was it feels bad. so good under here. I'm just going to stay. And then I'm what? like, what the fuck am I doing? And I got up and then I hopped on your board and started paddling back to you the shore. But I thought, I thought I was paddling out to the sea in, on my board. And I'm like, you're like, what are you doing? You're like, you better go in. And anyway, I was with the doctor when I did it. And one of my daughters was there and she kept asking questions. And he's like, you really like answer your kids' questions, hey? And I'm like. Of course I like I do. Like I I don't want my kid to like have this twisted half version of life. So like my daughters ask like, are we gonna be okay financially, for example? And like I love what, you know, whoever that example was that you gave. Amber, yeah. Amber. What I don't like about it and what I'm trying to do differently is I don't wanna show my kids seventy five bucks left over at the end of the week. I wanna show them because that's the household we grew up in, like fighting about money every single night forever. I want to show them abundance. Like I want to show them that you can get what you want, but you have to work for it. So another thing that I'm doing, right? Like my my daughter came home recently from a friend's. This she had like a like almost a one story Barbie dream home. Like it was so freaking high this thing. <laughs> and Harper's like, I want one, and I'm like, awesome. Like she's like, can we go get one now? And I'm like, that's the wrong question, Harper. The right question for Daddy is how can I get this? And I'm like, good question. And so she emptied the dishwasher morning and night for a full month, 60 times. And then we went out and bought it for her. And then my other daughter, Summer's like, I want the Barbie dream home. And I'm like, cool. Like, what's a better question? Like, how can I earn that? Now she's started, she's at day one of emptying the dishwasher and 30 days she'll get her Barbie dream home, which it's a good ROI on a kid. But I don't want my kids to think they're worth a dollar an hour for a job either. Like I want them to be paid like more than what their time's worth. So they start to associate effort and focus and time and consistency with a good outcome. Yeah, exactly. Like they get the reward after the hard work. So it's building a positive feedback loop from I want to, I can have. You know, I learned this from Jim Rohn and from Warren Buffett, like Warren talks about in his HBO doco, like how a better question is how can I do this and that versus this or that. And Mm. so... I've been huge on that because all the way on my journey as an investor, I've had the sickest lifestyle and I've never not done anything that I wanted to do because I'm like, we only live once. It's equally important to have a a great life while you invest. And there's plenty of people out there that we talk to that are like fire community type. Like, I'm just going to bust my ass. What if you don't get 15 years? What if your kids don't want to hang out with you in 15 years because you never did anything fun with them? Exactly. You've got to find that balance. Fully. So like, I suppose one thing that I wanted to say is like a softer, kind approach. Like I'm mm. certainly not like financial freedom is important to a 10 year old. Yeah. I'm or- like, she doesn't even know what financial freedom is. She doesn't even know what investing is, but she knows I'm building habits and character and values that will 
you know, make her whole in the future and make her feel good in that part of her life. Yeah, you, you see a lot of parents that force their kids into certain, you know, academic studies or sports or activities and they end up resenting them in the future because they just weren't passionate about it, they didn't enjoy it, it wasn't in alignment with that their values at that point in time. So having that softer, kinder approach, you know, may not be polarizing for the kids 100 percent. well i hope so like we'll we'll see right? we'll find out yeah <laughs> don't know I'll yeah in 20 years <laughs> <laughs> but you know another thing that i do which we don't in enforce i know there's again like i i try like a a softer approach to parenting they've got very safe and very hard boundaries but we call it like a bit more free range like i don't want to cut my kids so many times by the time they're 15 that they have to come to someone to like make a decision i want them to listen to themselves and i want them to like channel what's right for mm. them and make the right call so we've got two jars for each of the kids and again we don't really enforce this very much um but every time they get a dollar they break it into two and one's called savings and one called spending and they can spend that spending jar to empty and often they'll tip their savings jar into it as well like they're kids you know what i mean but the habit is what i want of every time you get a dollar thinking about where it's going to go. Yeah. Even if it doesn't go that way, that's the link that I want today for the future because my thought from my first job was money, fucking spend, spend every cent of it. Yeah. And from 14 or 13 when I got my first job until 25, I didn't have a single dollar for any single week unless it was for a holiday or some clothes or a surfboard that I was going to buy. And the second I had that, zero catch you later catch yeah. you later like my wife had to teach me how to save because i didn't know how to do it and like you know doing the 50 percent approach is probably a good way to do it because you know even if they only save 10 percent of their um, income for the rest of their lives they're going to be in a very very good position um, but you know that habit of you know taking the savings and putting it in the spending as well it'd be like there will be a time where they'll be like i want something but i can't get it because the savings are gone fully man like I'm not going to like sit on top of my four-year-old, eight-year-old, <laughs> no ten-year-old on this stuff. But um, I do some weird shit with them too, right? Like I just, when I was a little kid, I, I was one of those kids that was like, I'm going to cut flowers for some weird reason and then I'm going to door knock them at 10 and sell them and I'm going to make some money. I'm going to go up the street and buy some comics or some Maccas. Like I was, we were very, very free range as well. Like I think about now, I'm like, who lets their 10 year old walk up to Maccas with their five little <laughs> friends after they've just door knocked for two hours? And, and my mum didn't even know what we'll do it. The early 90s, eh? Sounds like a time. <laughs> but like, I sometimes do these things with my kids. Like, I'll set up a lemonade store. We'll go buy the lemonade. These stores are very non profitable. Like, it's a really bad business, but like, we'll go buy 20 bucks worth of lemonade. We'll sit on the side of the road for an hour. They'll make their own signs. They'll ask for the money. I'll make them physically go up to people which is another thing I'm trying to encourage. Like it's okay to go and ask for things. Mm. And, um, you know, they'll end up with their little money and they'll we'll go down the op shop or whatever and they'll spend 10 bucks and got get a couple, like three things. Got a few little Barlows just uh, <laughs> hustling for some coin on, on the side of the street, eh? <laughs> Mushroom, <laughs> <laughs> um, Like I think like a lot of the people that, that I talk with on, on a common basis is, you know, they do have some older kids as well that are sort of in there teens and you know getting to their later teens as well and you know you could probably get a little bit more involved at that stage of life because you know a lot of kids that are 14 15 16 are getting their first job now and and they're starting to you know become functioning members of society and you know doing all of that <laughs> stuff whatever it is and like for them they always ask like you know is there things that we can do for, for those kids to sort of you know pass the buck and just get them thinking about different things like, you know, in the future, you know, when Summer's maybe 16, 17 years of age, when she's actually starting to understand more about investing and income and expenses and things like that, you know, what type of things will you be educating her on or pushing her, like pushing onto her? You know, I, I really just like to speak from like what I know. And yep. so I don't know what I'm going to be doing at that time, but we've got some incredible clients. Like, how inspiring are some of the things that these people are doing with their kids? Yeah. Like, um, 
Yeah. Like an example there, like my mate Davo, um, he's bought three investment properties now. Um, he's got a big crypto portfolio as well, very successful. But what he's just done for his um, daughter and, and his next one on the way is he's just actually he's building a, an index fund for him. So he's going to get that fund to about $5,000 per kid leave that in there until their 21st birthday yeah. and then we'll just say, hey, here's, here's the keys to whatever it is at that point in time, whatever 5,000 becomes over a 21-year year period in the index, he'll just give that to them and then they can use that, whether it's for a holiday, for um, like buying a property, buying a car or hopefully by that point he's hoping to have taught them a little bit about investing and hopefully they continue doing that and, and keeping it for the longer term. I love that. Like some of the things that I've heard from our clients that have teenagers that I've been making some like notes on in the back of my mind is like some of them catch up once a month for like a family finance meeting. Yep. Um, others like get those kids to like set up and then cancel like energy bills. They get them to do like pay the water bills. They get them to be pay stuff. They get them to transfer money around online just for the sake of like knowing those habits. They yep. get them to connect you know, phone bills, they get them to go out to phone shops and negotiate plans. And like, these are skills that I didn't have. Like I was so well looked after by my mum that I never had to actually mm. do anything mm. except work. Mm. And I want my kids to have these real skills of like, hey, I'm thinking about private health. I don't know, I'm just saying that because I just had to recently waste my money on it. And like, I was just like. Hopefully. It's just I was paying it to Medicare anyway. I may as well get a benefit from it from having it. But like I just, you know, like how to like shop the market and figure out like what that looks like or how to like negotiate and find the best phone opportunity. And those are things that I'd like to do. And I think we'll definitely have an index fund for them in the mm. future like as a way to like when money goes here, you can make money while you sleep over yeah. a couple of years from this. I'll definitely educate them on cycles. I'll definitely educate them on, you know, like a handbook of what the ideal investment property looks like. Um, and I suppose like the, the last thing that I wanted to touch on that we do today is I like live in a place of just constant gratitude. Like the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is like I'm just so thankful for another mm. day. I'm like I'm alive again. Mm. Like I've, I've got an opportunity. Like there's a reason for me to be here again, mm. which is just so, I'm just so grateful for that. And constantly throughout the day, like I'm asking them questions like, what's one nice thing that you did today? Instead of like, how was school? Like, what's a nice thing that you did? Like, what was a nice thing that someone else did for you today? Love that. What's like something that you're grateful for? And they don't like that question. Like it's more like, what's something that you're thankful for or excited about? Yeah. But like, which I'm trying to get them to live in gratitude and like, cause gratitude creates abundance. And the second thing I do for abundance is I show them that we give money every single month to charity. Mm. Like I've, I haven't been able to do that, but it's something that I've wanted to do and finally I can do it. Mm. And I'm like, there's a local thing. They feed like a whole bunch of homeless people. They feed like another 5,000 people a week on the sunny coast. You can go buy a bread roll there for 10 cents. You can buy milk for 15. You can buy apples for 5 cents. It's all like really, really helping the people that need it the most, yeah. particularly in this market. Like there's such a need for people that are struggling. Families come in and needing emergency relief. And I'm like giving shows shows them that we have enough, yeah. that we can look after other people. Like Because it's so, like you can look after people in so many ways just from smiling to a stranger or helping them in the street or c community contribution donations but it's like it shows them that there's enough mm, and I love like that. there's a reason to accumulate financial freedom and it isn't just for yourself to like drive a Lambo which neither of us give a fuck about it's about like more than that helping people like transcending your ego self and you're like it's all about me self and Really, property is just the vehicle for that. It's like yeah. financial freedom, choices. What if your kid could do any work they wanted? What if they could learn anything that they wanted? What if they could help other people? What if they didn't live in fear mindset? Like mm. that's the reason we get our kids financially free and learning about this shit because what if like the world wasn't filled with people that were just chasing their own thing for the first 40 years of their life until they realised that that's hollow and there's a second half of life about helping others. Like what if kids got that because there was more than enough for them early in life? What if your kids were all financially free at 30 
because mm. they bought their first place at 20. Like, what would that look like? Mm. Mm. It's exciting, man. Like, it's a way bigger picture than just us or our Oh, 100%. Kids, you know? And it's cool to pass that forward onto the future generations and start to breed a little bit more love and kindness and compassion yeah. and gratitude in the world because you look at people that are just filled with that, those types of, of, of things. They're, they're amazing, beautiful people to be around as well. And it's just yeah. like when you if you can get yourself out of that survival mode and into thriving then you know there's a beautiful compound effect to a lot of those decisions that you make as well which you won't see when you make the decision but you'll see decades down the line once it all comes to fruition um so it's cool like i love that it's you know it's actually got nothing to do with teaching them anything about investing it's just like more about just teaching them about life without a doubt like i think that's the job that we all have as parents and you know, I think just softly, softly and enjoying the journey with them and remembering their little kids, they're not like yeah. little robots. They don't need all of the stuff that you're feeling transferred onto them and they don't need to be winning financially so that we can feel good in the future. Like yeah. we're doing it so that they have the choice to become and be who they are without like society hammering them like it's going to do and I'm, I'm just super excited for you guys like i would love in the comments if you're doing cool things yeah. to just whack them in the comments so that i can learn as well like i love the idea of all the cool crazy things like we've all read barefoot and stuff but it's yeah. like there's so many creative things that you guys are all doing to help and i'm just super grateful to be able to contribute to this community and i hope you know, we can pass on these lessons to our kids and they can pass them on and everything becomes better because of that longer term. Woo! That's a wrap. That's a wrap. Get Have a cool, bro. Yeah. Oh, sweaty. So sweaty. Oh, that's good. <laughs> that's so nice, eh? Oh.